I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the whole idea of Me Too community here. What? Tell me a little bit of what's been percolating in your head as you've thought about mm -hmm. it. All the things have been percolating. Yeah. Um, just like from when you talked about it in class or mm -hmm. just... Either one. Anything. Yeah. Okay, well, the first time I had heard about Me Too community was when you, Dr. Mitch, came into class with the shirt mm -hmm. on. And um, just kind of like you were really, you're really blunt and straightforward, like this is what community is and what, what it looks like and what it can be. And um, it's kind of like once you've tasted the Kool-Aid, you can't really go back. Um, you can't, everything else seems hollow and um, just meaningless almost in a yeah. sense. And it's just, truly it's just a new way of living and a new way of operating in my thoughts and how I relate to others. Um, how, like even the simple things of how I view classwork. Because mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I'm going to class, but it's more, this is a great opportunity to get to know the person next to me, but also to be like, you know, show what you're really committed to, show the kind of person you are in your in your academics mm -hmm. and in the relationship in the classroom too. So give me a before and after. Yeah. You know, what was relationships like or how did you do them before mm -hmm. and what do you see yourself doing now? Yeah, so before <laughs> um, I tasted the Kool-Aid, I guess, relationships for me I thought were deep. I thought mm -hmm. I was, you know, had all these deep friendships and um, the fact of the matter is I didn't. Mm -hmm. They were hollow, they were shallow, and yeah, there was people I could talk to about stuff that was going on in my life, but it's not the same, and um, it'd be like that mentality of go to class, say hi to your friends, have friends over for dinner, and go to yeah. coffee, and you have these deep conversations, and all is good, because you're talking about God and your life, and, um, and not that those conversations are completely meaningless, they're just not what I would call real. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm now what relationships look like for me are not totally different but it's just like the context and what's being talked about is different mm. um, same settings mm. but it's just it's more real like um, I've just grown in conversation with friends where it's like hey I have leukemia and not being like hey how do we fix this da, 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 go through a list but just being like that sucks like we can sit in this sucky feeling yeah. and how much life can be the pits yeah. And that's okay. Like to be where you are is okay. You don't need a Christian band-aid verse. You don't need a God's got this. You don't need anything like that cuz that's all true. Like God is in control and God is on your side and there's Bible verses for just about any situation <laughs> yeah. in life. And that doesn't make them untrue. It just doesn't necessarily make them what needs to be said. Yeah. And there's just what I've learned is there's so much more power in just being with people mm -hmm. and listening and loving them where they're at mm -hmm. and sitting with them in the craps of life mm -hmm. instead of being that person who's trying to fix things for them or for yourself or sure. trying to trying to pursue that band-aid yeah. to put over things. I suspect that there are a lot of students on CCU's campus that actually think they're doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought I was doing that. Yeah, so uh, how do you distinguish for them the difference between, because what we talked about in class was a you should community versus a me too community. Mm -hmm. How do you distinguish or help them figure out that they're maybe not doing it and they think they are? Is there any signs that you could identify? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'll talk about an example mm -hmm. first with um, a dear friend of mine that um, struggles with pornography and this person had talked to me about it before and mm -hmm. opened up and expressed that to me and being the good Christian girl that I am, my response was, hey, I love you, like, this is what God says, like, we all struggle, it's okay, like, you can do this, I'll be praying for you, and of course, like, not just ending the conversation from there, I kept the relationship with this person, and, um, and I thought that was deep, I thought that was real, I thought that was, I guess you could say, in my mind, that was the me to community, yeah. um, but once my perspective was changed, this person and I had a conversation about it again, and I was just able to sit with this person and hear what they're struggling with, but also say, you know what, like, that sucks. Mm -hmm. That's hard. You feel this way, and that is the worst. That's painful. But also, not just leave it at that and not give it a Band-Aid cover-up, but also say, yeah, like, 
I struggle with lust too, just in different avenues, whether that's mm-hmm. lusting after a piece of chocolate cake <laughs> yeah. or whatever else it may be. And sure. just seeing that relief on that person's face for the first time mm-hmm. and seeing it literally like physically seeing that wall come down between me and that person. This mm-hmm. person was like, man, like, yeah, she doesn't exactly struggle with the exact same issue. Like it's not the same fruit of that issue, right. but it's the same rooted problem. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think just really realizing like we all sin and we all experience the same struggles yeah. just the fruit of those struggles looks different and we can always meet each other at that root mm-hmm. whether it's lust or anger or greed we all experience it whatever the issue is yeah, yeah. <clears throat> how do you think ccu would be different mm-hmm. if we were able to have a community like this yeah um <laughs> i think a lot would change <laughs> um Gosh, just how I envision it changing um, is almost so powerful that I can't put it to words. Mm-hmm. But it just, from my own experience, it is experience and seeing how, just even with the few people I have this summer, just having that real Me Too community mindset mm-hmm. has changed my life and their life, and then the people around us, their lives, and how they operate. Like, it's just, you know, the fire's been started and yeah. it's spreading, and like, it's just changing in how we relate to one another on yeah. campus. Like, it's no longer like the hey on the path. It's like the hey, like, let me give you a hug. Like, mm-hmm. how's it going? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't really care if I'm 10 minutes late to class. Like, if you need to talk, let's talk. Like, yeah. just realizing the importance of people and community that God has placed in your life and giving that the value that it deserves instead of being preoccupied with the hey, I'll catch you later. I have yeah, to go right. to class or I have homework to do. <clears throat> Just noticing, like, this summer I was super busy. I had a lot on my plate, but when God put that relationship stuff in front of me, which I'm so grateful f- grateful for, mm-hmm. and I took time for that, like, not only did he bless that, but, like, I wasn't exhausted if I stayed up late with someone or, you it's know. It's amazing how that works. It's amazing. Like, mm-hmm. God is more intentional than we could ever imagine. Sure. And we just have to allow him to be yeah. and just be willing to see what he's doing. Yeah. And so if that were to happen on CCU's campus, I mean, from like a demographic, economical point of view, CCU would blow up. Like students would be wanting to come here because we talk about community, but I wouldn't say CCU's community is real community. I'd say it's very apathetic, very shallow, very, yeah, like we're all united through Christ. And we can say that, but if you don't know the person's heart sitting next to you on some level, then we're not a community. Sure. And um, I would just like to see CCU become a real community where people come here like, man, I want a piece of that. Yeah. I want to be a part of that because this is life changing and world changing. Yeah. Um, so I think CCU could really, in not a cheesy way, but really could change the world, especially yeah. in Christendom. So. Within the relationships themselves. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, right. It, that the um, you mentioned in class that that lecture or that talk that I gave mm-hmm. was kind of a pivot point. Yeah. Was it, did things come into view or into focus more for you or what effect or what stood out to you? Um, well, to be honest, the first thing that stood out to me was, okay, Dr. Mitch really cares about this. Mm-hmm. Like, I could tell how passionate you were about it and how mm-hmm. much it meant to you. And that triggered something inside of me. I was like, okay, like, if this means a lot to him, like this is worth giving my attention to. Sure. And um, so that was the first trigger. And then, yeah, it triggered some thoughts in my mind of, okay, like, I put the Band-Aid verse on Mm -hmm. my relationships, on myself. I do that to myself, too. Mm -hmm. And um, just when you talked about grace and forgiveness, which were themes throughout the semester, but... um, that hit, I think those two things hit me the most and the difference between forgiveness and grace and how just not saying it's okay to make mistakes but living in that and knowing like you're going to fail constantly like you're never going to be good enough and yes God is but he created millions of people so we can't be good enough together mm-hmm. and so we can support each other in that and um, but in order for that to be successful and in order for you to have real relationships, what stuck out to me the most was you have to have grace for yourself. Yeah. And that's hard 
and that is a challenge and because um, I struggle a lot with guilt and shame and letting people down which is totally in my mind because they don't have those expectations sure. so just once I was able to recognize that and continually keep working on okay like yeah you screwed up move on yeah. you're yeah. gonna screw up again so just move on like let God take care of it mm-hmm. and um, just hearing you talk about that and then applying it and watching how I gained freedom in that mm-hmm. with myself and once I had that freedom mm-hmm. then I had freedom with others yeah, yeah. so I, I, that f- was that freedom I mean it sounds like that was kind of a accidental or a surprise outcome yeah for you yes absolutely <clears throat> okay it, it was not something I went into like I didn't go into it with a goal of oh I want to set myself free cause sure. I, or anything like that I was like oh I just want to have real meaningful relationships yeah. and because I'm very people oriented but truly like that's a huge blessing that's come out of this experience yeah. it's just where there's people always say this in the Christian community but where there's grace there's freedom Mm -hmm. and it's so true but it has to start with you first you have to start internally first so the last thing I have um, students might listen to this and and say that sounds really wonderful and great (laughs) but um, what you know compel me I mean what what makes it so compelling to make time out of playing video games or doing anything else yeah. to do something like this? I mean, what do you think? Um, I have to figure out how to put it to words. Um, it's really, it's really something you have to experience to know why. But if I put words to it. Once you've tried it, even if it's taking a 10 minute break out of your video games or homework, to have an intentional, Mm -hmm. deep in the craps conversation with someone Mm -hmm. and just take 10 minutes to sit there with them, God feels a part of your heart that you didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. It's something that we crave and we were made to be a part of, and I didn't even realize that until I was partaking in it. And honestly, like, yeah, video games are fun, homework's good, all good things, sure. but once you've experienced this, like, there really is no going back in everything else. You'll still find joy in, mm-hmm. but this will be satisfying. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it, we have not only Me Too, we have Come and See. Mm-hmm. Because it, how do you explain something to somebody that they have never experienced before? It sounds right. like kind of what you're right. struggling with here. Right, okay. and exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's turn the tables. Okay. Do you get to ask questions? Yeah, for you. Yeah. Okay. And <laughs> and uh, 